Hey guys, welcome back to Sam Industries. Today, the install guide for the brand new Sam Industries dual overhead cam Mazda B series cam sensor kits. Very excited to finally be releasing these. Uh, this, of course, being a 3D printed prototype we made uh, three and a half years ago, so we don't need that. What we do need, however, is this kit that you can buy right now from the store.com. You should see a little link on the bottom on where to purchase this. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the kit and uh, show you guys what you need to do to install it. This is one of the launch edition kits. That means it comes in a special color and it comes individually serialized. So these are already sold out at the time of this filming. Uh, so now if you buy one of these, it'll be gray in color. It'll just say Sam Industries. If you were one of the lucky 20 people to get the limited edition one, this is number four out of 20. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's check these out real quick. I actually laser engraved all these myself. The next ones will get laser engraved by a factory, but, oh uh, dude, there it is. One special edition Sam Industries cam sensor kit in purple, individually serialized. So that'll come in your kit, or if you're ordering starting from this now, you will receive a gray one. You will get a brand new OEM Kia sensor in a bag like that. You'll get one installation guide tool, a little 3D printed plastic bit right there. It'll come with everything you need to do the wiring for the kit. So that's one uh, improved quick connect connector, three pin that comes with the pins and seals to keep it as a sealed connector. A Viton upgraded O-ring. So this is the same O-ring that you'll find on your distributor or your CAS, uh, but just a nicer material that comes with the kit. You'll have a boot for your wiring harness. You'll have hardware for the kit, a dowel pin, and then you will have a drill bit. A very special size drill bit just for this dowel pin. I believe these are number 23. So those are cobalt bits included in the kit. And for those who ordered the first edition kit, the first 20, you'll have another O-ring in the kit. Later kits will not come with this. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is going to require you to drill a hole in your cam. So what this kit does is gives you a plus one or a single tooth cam reference. So that way you can send your cam position to your aftermarket ECU. This is not a direct replacement for a CAS or distributor. This will not work with a stock ECU. So what we do is take our cam that drives your CAS or your distributor. In this case is a 1.6 head. So it's the intake cam. If you have a 1.8 or a BP, it'll be your exhaust cam. And we're going to add a dowel pin in here and that dowel pin, along with our bracket, will allow us to sense that single dowel pin as a plus one reference. And the kit comes with everything you need to do that. This is where our little drill guide here will come in handy. So the drill guide, if you look closely, it's kind of hard to see on camera, there's an arrow and a text on top that's pointing upward for TDC, and then a hole on the left side that says drill here, and a hole in the center. If you check your cam, you should have an alignment pin on the belt side of the engine, when it's pointing straight up, that should be at TDC. So if I flip this around right now, point a little arrow up at TDC, that should slip right in there, and it does. And you can't get this backwards. If you have it 180 degrees out, it will not slip back in the hole. So if it fits in, you have it correct. So if we take that little drill guide here and the drill bit included in the kit, if you use the middle hole, just stick the bit in till the tip just starts to poke out towards the end there. That is how deep the hole needs to be drilled. In this case, I'll just go ahead and mark our drill bit with a Sharpie to know how deep we're supposed to drill later. You can also use a piece of tape, or if you're super fancy, you can use an actual like drill stop. I don't have any of those, so the Sharpie's just gonna have to do. So there we go. I have marked our necessary depth on my drill bit. We can go over, go ahead and chuck that up on our drill. So we went ahead and got our camshaft chucked up in the vise here with a rag to protect our machine surfaces. And then again, we line this up. I would not drill this in the head. This is size so that you can put this in the cylinder head and drill it in the head if you wanted to, but you're gonna get little iron shavings inside your cylinder head and you're gonna have a bad time. So I would say, don't do that. But now we have our mark, our drill guide is in place. I'm gonna hold it down here. This should help you keep your drill bit nice and straight. And you're just going to drill till your little mark stop meets up with the edge of that print. And this is pretty soft steel, so this shouldn't be hard, especially with these included drill bits, which are nice cobalt bits. So 
just like that. Now, you'll see there, got a very nice, properly centered, properly depth hole for our dowel pin, which I will grab real quick. So, from our kit, we have this little bag of hardware, should have three bolts in it, and that little tiny four millimeter dowel pin. So I'm gonna open him up and take the dowel pin out. And there we have it. You'll notice one end is rounded. So that's the end we're gonna stick in there. Just make it easier to hammer in. You just line them up with the hole. And then it should not press with just your finger. You want it nice and tight so it does not fall out. That's why I drilled a very specific size hole. Just like that. So our dowel pin's in. It should be right between 4.2 to 5 millimeters of stick out here, if you were to measure that. But that's all we need to do to the cam. Uh, I would recommend hitting it with some brake clean, making sure you get all the shavings off of it. Uh, but as far as the video is concerned, that's how you put the dowel pin in. And this is exactly 90 degrees before top dead center when you fire this. So all of you guys running an aftermarket ECU in your settings, you'll have to change where your trigger pattern sits. You're going to choose a single tooth cam pattern. You're going to tell it it's 90 degrees before top dead center. Now we can go back to the table and put it in the head. Okay, so we're back over here with the cylinder head. We've got the cam reinstalled. I just put two cam caps on it for now just to hold it in place. Uh, I went ahead and grabbed the calipers. Uh, we'll zero this out real quick. Make sure we're right about that five millimeter mark. And we are at 4.95. I'm very happy with that. That is fantastic. So our dowel is in. We're done with the drill bit. Uh, I'll bring back our little hardware bag here. Next, we will want to open our sensor. And this is the extra step. Uh, so this is only for the people that ordered the limited edition ones, the purple ones. Uh, there was a slight difference to the machining on this versus later ones. Uh, so we need a thicker O-ring. So the sensor comes with one. If you have a purple one, you need to take off the thin one and put on the thicker one that comes in the kit. Uh, if you have any one after the purple one, all the gray ones, you don't need to do that. This sensor then will go in this hole right here. So we just squeeze them in place. And then a single 10 mil right here to hold it in. Just like that. We'll go ahead and put on our O-ring which is again, the same as the distributor or the CAS O-ring from the factory. We're including nice upgraded Viton ones for everybody. That will sit on the head just like that. Then you will have your two short M8 bolts that came in the kit. You'll want those to hold it in place. The stock bolts for your distributor are more than likely too long since this is so much thinner. Hence why we include the new ones with the kit. And there we have the sensor kit fully installed. And that's it, that's all you gotta do. Once you have your hole drilled, that's in place. At five millimeters, we have plenty of clearance for the sensor. Once it spins up, this is a Hall Effect sensor. It'll have no problem at low speed or high speed. Since these are OEM, they're very reliable. These come off of a Hyundai or Kia 2.5 or 2.7 liter. Uh, this is a newer engine, so these are really easy to get at parts stores if for, every reason, if for any reason you ever need to replace it. Uh, the part number is also on the bag, of course. For wiring, there's a list on the product page, but just as a reminder, you'll see your connector is actually numbered one, two, three. Pin one is power, it's 12 volt sensor. Pin two is ground and pin three is signal. So you need that for your aftermarket ECU. And these are really nice connectors because they click in like that and then they just press to unclick. So super easy to get on and off. And just to make it a little more professional, we're including the fancy boots that go with that. So once you get your terminals in and wired, you can close it in place and you can get your boot on there. Like that, you end up with a nice, very professional looking installation. And there you go. That's a full installation guide for the brand new Sam Industries dual overhead cam Mazda B series cam sensors. We also already offer a crank sensor kit for all the front wheel drive G-series based Mazda stuff out there. If you go to the store right now, you can buy a tone ring for the flywheel and a kit to help install a sensor on the transmission side. That way your crank sensor has A, a very high resolution 60 minus two tooth wheel 
and B, it's far away from any oil spills, it's far away from the belts, all your wiring can stay tucked away. It's a really nice solution. I like it a lot. And I'm currently working on adapting it to fit rear-wheel drive stuff as well. So keep an eye out in the future for any products from the Festiva store slash Sam Industries, uh, especially if you guys, if you're on a Miata stuff and you want a 60 minus two trigger wheel on the flywheel side, I'm working on that kit right now. I hope to have that really soon. We will definitely have a guide video for installing the front wheel drive version of that soon. Uh, until then though, get this kit while you can. Link below in the description. Link should be also at the bottom corner down here somewhere. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. See ya.